Today, we are going through my top 24 running back rankings for the fantasy football season, which is rapidly approaching. We're going to break them down by tiers. I think there's like five tiers or so. We'll get through the first 24 because that is the meat, the juice. Those are the guys that will help you hopefully get to the playoffs, hopefully get to the championship, and hopefully get you the hardware. Not trying to waste y'all's time today, so tuck your shirts in. Super flex them traps. And stop yelling. Simply put, these are how the tiers are going to be broken down. We've got five of them. We've got league winners. We've got can win leagues. We've got feeling good about these guys being our RB1, I think. We've got dudes that are oozing talent. And we've got dinner roles, a.k.a. We've got very clear defined roles in the offense that they're in. Some of these guys have league winning upside, but we don't feel overly confident that if they do give us the full 16, that they're going to be the league winning type. But these top four, I do rank one through four and the way tiers work. Listen, like obviously we can nitpick between who's the RB one, who's the RB three, who's the RB four. But if they're in the same tier, I kind of value them the same. I think their ceiling and their floor are similar for one reason or another. The offensive system, the offensive scheme, the offensive line, how much, uh, how many passes they're going to catch, all that kind of stuff. Now, I think these four guys, C-Mac, Saquon, Bijan, and Austin Eckler, all dudes who have elite pass-catching upside, all dudes that could, if in the right scenario, haul in 70, 80, up to 100-plus passes in their offense. C-Mac in a great offense in San Francisco. Austin Eckler's gone for like 1,800 yards and 20 touchdowns in back-to-back -back seasons. Saquon, as long as he can get that contract figured out, I feel strongly about the Giants building up off of this big offensive season or just big overall you know, successful season that they had last year. Saquon had a big bounce back after suffering the ACL a couple of years back. And then Bijan, of course, the number eight overall pick by my Atlanta Falcons, already a Hall of Famer in my book, but he's got to prove it. And on the way to the Hall of Fame, on the way to paving that path, he's got to put up the numbers. And I expect him to do that immediately. Now, we've had rookie running backs. You know, Zeke in 2016 was a top three fantasy running back. Saquon in 2018, the dude went for 2,000 yards from scrimmage and double-digit touchdowns, okay? So this is an offense in Atlanta where they have the number one ranked run-blocking line per PFF. They have an offense that runs the ball at a crazy high rate. And if Desmond Ritter can be even close to above average, then this offense is going to churn out points. And we're not a good defense. So uh, I'm excited to see what Bijan can do right away. I think all three of these guys are three down backs that get a lot of carries on the goal line and that catch a lot of passes. And if they play the full 17 games, you are getting a 20 plus point per game running back in your RB1 slots. Now we have the second tier of dudes, the Ken Win Leagues tier, where I think that if everything breaks right, they get in that league winner tier. We have Nick Chubb, who is coming off of a quiet 1,700-yard, like 13-touchdown season. We have Kareem Hunt out of the way there. We have the Browns offensive line, which has been good for about half a decade. If Deshaun Watson is good, if Deshaun Watson gets back to what he was a couple of years ago, then Nick Chubb's going to be the RB1 in arguably you know, a top-five NFL offense. And he might just get more pass-catching work back there because with Kareem Hunt out of there, it's like Jerome Ford. Jerome, Romy, Rome who? That dude ain't catching more passes than Nick Chubb. So he's got the upside to go for 2,000 from scrimmage and 15 touchdowns. JT, we've already seen that, but I'm a little bit weary of, you know, what his pass catching work is with a mobile quarterback and Anthony Richardson. Plus our offensive line kind of fell off a cliff last year. So I'm a little more hesitant on Taylor. I think he'll be a beast. And again, he's like my number six ranked running back. So I've got no problem with having him as my RB1. But I have a tough time having a practical standpoint about how he can get into the league winner category with a questionable offense, a questionable offensive line, and questionable pass catching upside. Same thing with Derrick Henry. I think I liked him a lot less before DeAndre Hopkins came, and now I like him a lot more because I'm less concerned about the offense, right? I was concerned that if Traylon Burks was the one and it was just Chiggy behind him, everybody's just zoning on Derrick Henry. Now D-Hop coming in spreads the offense out because it pushes everybody else down the totem pole. Chiggy and Traylon no, have to, no longer have to be the focal point of that offense. Now it's D-Hop and then Traylon, and then Chiggy, and Derrick Henry's back there in the backfield. So it's going to be tough for defenses to really zone in on any one player, which makes me feel a lot better about Derrick Henry. So those are my top seven running backs so far. And if you just want to skip the video and get right to our rankings, we've got them for every single position. We've got overall rankings for super flex and one quarterback leagues. As it says right down there below, the cheapest and the easiest way to get our draft guide for your upcoming drafts is to just go to Underdog, underdogfantasy.com, or the app will be linked down below. 
And when you deposit $10 or more, all the way up to 100 bucks, they're going to double whatever you put down on the platform so you can do drafts with us on there. Or if you just want the draft guide, that is the cheapest way to get it because you get it for free when you deposit $10 or more on Underdog using code BDGE. BDGE will get you 100% match plus the draft guide for free as well as any updates to the draft guide because it comes via email, via PDF immediately after you sign up on Underdog. And any updates we will send to them and they will send to you. And if you're in a state that's not eligible for the underdog deposit match, uh, the draft guide is available on bdge.shop, but it is a little bit more expensive. RB8 is Mr. Ramondre Stevenson. I'm as high on Ramondre as probably anybody in the fantasy space. Loved him as a prospect. Broke out last year, predicted that. He's a three-down back that catches passes that's more explosive than giving credit for. And now with Damian Harris out of the way, he's going to be the clear goal line back. The guys behind him, Pierre Strong, Kevin Harris, Ty Montgomery, like I get it. Like someone's probably going to have a role there. They averaged three touches per game combined last year. Like the coaching staff doesn't give a shit about the guys behind them. Some of them will carve out some sort of role, but it's going to be Ramondre's backfield. And let me remind you, I get it. When la- last year, when Damian Harris got hurt, that's when Ramondre like really took over. But if you look at the splits with games, with Damian Harris on the field, Ramondre still averaged over 16 touches per game. Without him on the field, he was over 18 touches per game. So it wasn't like he was an eight-touch-per-game guy. It wasn't like he was just washed away to the side. He was still borderline a workhorse in that Patriots offense when Damian Harris was on the field, especially when he came back from the injury. They realized Stevenson gave him their best chance to win. And Stevenson wore down a little bit at the end of last year. I get it. That's what's going to happen when you have a 230-pound back. You're not really sure what it takes conditioning-wise to get through the entire NFL season. Even going back to college, played at JUCO. He was suspended a few times. He got injured a few times. Like He never really played a full season. So going into this year, he knows that conditioning needs to be his number one focus. So if Ramondre puts it all together, I actually think he's a relatively solid dark horse pick to be the RB1 overall in fantasy this year. I think Tony Pollard could also do it, who was the next running back on this list at the RB9 spot. He's explosive. He's fast. He's a pass catcher. He could do it all in a really good offense in Dallas. Obviously, Zeke is out of the picture. We'll see if Zeke resigns there. But besides Zeke, they have Ronald Jones. They've got Deuce Vaughn. They've got Malik Davis. They have no one who's really like a problem for Tony Pollard in terms of the workload. I don't think they want to give Pollard 20-plus touches, but even on 15 to 18 touches, this dude is really, really explosive and has crazy upside. So he's another dude that, again, if if all things kind of break right, would not shock me if he's a top – three, two, one fantasy running back this year. Jacobs, we just saw him rip off a, a top three season. I'm obviously a little bit more skeptical. I'm, I'm nervous about the offense overall with Jimmy G at the helm. Uh, he's obviously holding out for a contract right now, so these rankings will shift drastically as the summer goes by. And again, if you want to be updated on our rankings, the full rankings list, that will be in the draft guide. Moving on to feeling good, I think. These are dudes that like we either know are really talented dudes or we know are going to get high volume or we have a mix of both of those. We have Brees Hall at RB11. We have Aaron Jones at 12, Mixon at 13, Etienne at 14, Dobbins at 15, and Najee Harris at 16. Brees Hall returning from the ACL was put on the pup. Not really that big of a deal at this point in the summer, but I still have questions about how early he's going to get to 100%. And I also think, I actually think less so now that Dalvin Cook's dealing with this case and he might get a suspension that will probably knock some teams out of the interest in the free agency with him if he does get a suspension, but if he doesn't, then the Jets are obviously a favorite to land Dalvin Cook, and he will play a major role in Brees Hall's comeback. Aaron Jones, I think, is just perennially underrated, a top 10 back again in fantasy last year. I think Jordan Love is going to look to dump the ball off to him early and often, so Aaron Jones just a, a, a guy I love that you can get in like the, the mid-fifth round right now. If I fade running backs, he is one of my targets. Mixon just going to get a ton of fucking volume for absolutely no reason, hasn't really deserved it, but he's a bully. He'll get goal line work. He'll catch some passes, and he's just attached to a fantastic offense. So, you know, 10 to 12 touchdowns, not out of the range of outcomes for him. I don't want him as my RB1, but wouldn't be, like, totally upset. ETN's a dude I go back and forth on because he's so explosive, but Doug Peterson's been so vocal, and you don't have to listen to his words. You believe his actions, right? This is this is a lifestyle content brand we're talking about over here. You believe people's actions, not their words. And Doug Peterson is both vocally made this clear, as well as everything he's ever done throughout his career is forcing some sort of running back by committee. And ETN will be the best part of that backfield. But I think he proved to us that he's probably not that great of a pass catcher, um, at least relative to the way we thought he was going to be coming out of college because he had a very high volume of targets and receptions and stuff, but hasn't been great in the NFL so far. They drafted Tank Bigsby in the third round, which is not capital to scoff at. And I think they're a really good duo with each other. Now, people ask, you know, I 
they've been compared to like a thunder and lightning and they're saying like, oh, Travis Etienne's like heavier and whatever. The comp there is that Travis Etienne is explosive. He's not a power runner. He doesn't lower his shoulder and run guys over. Tank Bigsby runs a lot more physical. He's a lot more stronger of a runner, but he can also play on all three downs. He can catch passes and he's athletic. So I think they're going to utilize both guys to a heavy degree. I don't know who's going to be used on the goal line. And that is where my concern kind of comes in from Etienne. If they didn't draft Tank Bigsby, if they drafted like Deuce Vaughn or something, like a six round pick, Etienne would be much higher in my rankings. I feel a lot more comfortable with him, but by the end of the year, we're going to see some sort of committee that makes me a little bit nervous. I love Dobbins. I'm a little bit nervous about what's going on at training camp, but I do think it's more contract related that he's sitting out from training camp. I don't think he's actually hurt at all. And I've gone through why I love Dobbins so much. Dobbins was wildly efficient as a rookie. And even last year, coming back from the ACL, he still ranked top 10 in breakaway run rate and elusiveness rating and yards per touch. Like every efficiency metric Dobbins has been elite in since entering the league. We just need him to put it together. And I think he does that two years removed from the ACL in an offense that's got Todd Munkin running the show. Lots of weapons, lots of touchdown opportunities, a healthy and paid up bag filled Lamar Jackson, Baltimore. We going to get it over here. Staying within the AFC North, we have Najee Harris, who I'd like really want no part in, but he is my RB, what, 16 or 17. I just think he gets 250 touches. I think he will get all the goal line work so he could back his way into, you know, a top 15 finish once again. When we get to the next tier, we've got the oozing with talent tier. These are guys where like, we're really not sure what to expect. Some of them are in new situations. Some of them are in new depth charts. Kenneth Walker is the first guy on this list at RB17. They obviously bring in Zach Charbonnet, who's got second round draft capital. Kenneth Walker was so fucking impressive as a rookie. He was breaking off huge runs left and right. He ended up with four-figure rushing yards in like limited time as the starter. So I really like Kenneth Walker. He's also attached to a really solid offense in Seattle who brought in Jackson Smith and Jigba and Zach Charbonnet. So like, I kind of feel like we're overthinking this now at running back 17. We have a young explosive running back with an unbelievably like athletic talent profile. So I, I really like Kenneth Walker here at 17. Jameer Gibbs, I'm warming up to a little bit, especially because of the fact that David Montgomery is missing so much time at camp, right? One of the reasons I don't love to draft rookie running backs is when they go into a situation with a veteran there, it takes them some time to like really jump up the depth chart in training camp. But if they're forced into the to the RB1 role because a guy like David Montgomery is missing a bunch of time with a, whatever he's missing it with, fucking hamstring injury or something like that, it kind of like jump starts their momentum. And momentum is so important for younger running backs. Like if you can capture a little bit of momentum, a lot of times that's the difference between being a good fantasy player and a great fantasy player. But I also think that if all else equal, if everybody's healthy, they're going to have clear defined roles. We're going to have Gibbs playing the DeAndre Swift role and David Montgomery playing the Jamal Williams role. Now, I also want to say like everyone keeps comping the stats that Swift had to Jameer Gibbs. It's also really important to understand that like the Lions defense was atrocious last year through the first eight weeks of the season. Like the last five minutes of every game were literally just dump offs to DeAndre Swift. There were games where he would have five catches on the final drive. And I think their defense has taken a step up, although they might've just lost Chauncey Garner Johnson for the season, which would be detrimental, obviously. But I also, I, I think that kind of plays into the DeAndre Swift volume role. I think Gibbs will have a good year. I think the momentum, the way it's going right now, it's possible that he has a great year, but I am still hesitant to bet on it. Next, we've got Akers who finished the year really strong with the Rams last year, operated as the workhorse, and I don't see a reason why he wouldn't go into the season operating as a workhorse. They've got no one behind him on that depth chart. Zach Evans, six-round pick. Kyron Williams, small and six-round pick. Everybody else stinks there. So Akers, I'm cautiously very, very optimistic on him. It feels like someone that you're getting in the sixth round that has – uh, the upside of 300 to 350 touches, plus he's a good pass catcher, very athletic. So he should play a three down roll there uh, for as long as he shows that he's good enough to keep it. After that, we got Pierce, one of my favorite running backs coming out of college last year, proved to us that he can be a workhorse at the NFL level. He very much like Ramondre got a little tired towards the end of the season. That's that's what happens when you don't play the workhorse role in college, his season high carry total in college was 106 at Florida. So he comes into the NFL, never really carried the whole workload, does that, wears down a little bit by the end of the year. Uh, I think Pierce is now in an ascending offense. They bring in CJ Stroud. They bring in Dalton Schultz. They get John Mechie back. They bring in Robert Woods. They got a lot of new guys coming into the system that I think will make this offense way better than last year. And Pierce will be the main beneficiary of that. So I like Pierce. I think he's a better pure runner than the next guy on this list who is Miles Sanders at running back 21. Sanders goes to the Panthers situation where like it's a downgrade in the offense. It's a downgrade in the offensive line. It's a downgrade in a lot of things. So despite him coming off a career year where he looked fucking phenomenal, I'm just like not really sold that he's going to get back to rookie year Miles Sanders where he's catching 60 passes. Like he was horrible 
last year in the passing game. He has been on the decline every year since that rookie year in 2019. He has gotten worse and worse, less and less involved, less and less efficient in the passing game. And I'm starting to think like, okay, maybe we just look at the bigger sample size and that's more likely who he actually is as a player. So Sanders, I could see him being like the every down back for maybe the first half of the season in an offense that's like, okay, they're not bad, right? Same kind of makeup with Pierce and the Texans, but the Panthers aren't going to be like anything special on offense, in my opinion. So Sanders, I'm like, I'm like, okay with him as my RB2, but I'm not like overly ecstatic and targeting him everywhere. Like some people are. Alexander Madison, kind of the same feel where I, I kind of feel like by the end of the year, we're going to be looking at a running back by committee in an offense that's really pass heavy. And Madison has proven that he could catch passes for sure, but I don't think they want him to play that role, to be honest with you. I think with Dalvin Cook out, Cousins is going to throw Hawkinson, Addison, Jefferson, their their pass rate is going to be very high. They have a bad defense. They have a bad passing defense, which means they're going to have to reciprocate and throw the ball a ton. Madison's a thumper. I think he'll get a lot of the goal line work, but wouldn't be surprised if Ty Chandler and Dwayne McBride end up forcing a committee there in Minnesota. So, like, again, cautiously optimistic about Madison. I would probably let somebody else in your league uh, take Madison. And then we've got the last two, dinner rolls, that tier. we got running back 23, Montgomery, running back 24 in Pacheco. Very similar players in my eyes in terms of fantasy outlook. They both have the clear, like, thumper two down goal line role in their offense. We got Montgomery coming over from the Bears where he's been a really, really good running back fantasy-wise in real life for his entire rookie contract. Comes over to Detroit where he's getting that Jamal Williams role where Williams led the NFL in rushing touchdowns, in red zone rushes, 10 zone rushes, goal line rushes, toenail pile, all of it. That's where Demon comes in. But again, I'm nervous about the fact that he's missing so much camp time. Regardless, they want to use a thumper. They want to use a dude who's who plays bully ball, and that is Montgomery to a T. So if he's healthy, I don't see a world where he finishes with fewer than like eight rushing touchdowns in that offense, and you'll take that all the way down by running back 24, which is Isaiah Pacheco. Very similar, young, explosive, bully ball type player. However, they don't run the ball on the goal line like the Detroit Lions do. The Kansas City throws the ball when they're inside the 5 and 10 yard line at a historic rate. And I don't fucking blame them because they have Patrick Mahomes. So they throw the ball. And when they run the ball, they run it to the wide receivers. Sometimes they run it to other running backs. Patrick Mahomes runs it in. Like, it's not always Pacheco. So uh, I, I think in theory, the role looks cool for Pacheco. I just don't think it actually translates to a lot of fantasy points because he does not catch passes. That is all. Jerick McKinnon is the pass catcher in the red zone. He's the pass catcher on third downs. Pacheco really didn't catch passes last year. And I'm worried that, like, their game plan on the goal line really never revolves around the running back. So can he? Rumble his way to 10 touchdowns? Absolutely, but like I'm not betting on it, which is why he's down here at running back 24. So there you have it. Wanted to rip through my top 24 running back rankings broken down by tiers. Wanted to do it quick. Wanted to do it efficiently. I hope y'all enjoyed. We'll be doing this for the wide receivers uh, later on this week, probably on Friday. So make sure you're subscribed if you are not already. And make sure you go to underdogfantasy.com. Make sure you download the app. Link is in the description. If you deposit with promo code BDGE, $10 or more, all the way up to 100 bucks, they're going to double whatever you put down. We're going to be ringing pick em games in throughout the season. We are going to be smashing parlays. We are going to be paying the mortgage. We are going to be diversifying the revenue. We are going to be electrifying the profit. Go grab your draft guide. Table of contents. We've got rankings for every league type. We've got the must draft list, the all fade list, the strategy, depending on where you're picking in your draft from. Our favorite late round targets. $10 on Underdog will get you that for free. I love you, and I'm out of here.